Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, General Aviation gets a boost from FAR 23 rewrite, Textron destroys some great little airplanes, third time's a charm for Cygnus. I'm Brie Cross, it's December 19th, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. Our first report provides a great way to start the new week because a long-awaited day in the GA community has finally arrived. The FAA announced late last week that they have issued a final rule that overhauls the airworthiness standards for small general aviation airplanes. This innovative rule will reduce the time it takes to move safety-enhancing technologies for small airplanes into the marketplace and will also reduce costs for the aviation industry. The FAA's new FAR Part 23 rule establishes performance-based standards for airplanes that weigh less than 19,000 pounds and with 19 or fewer seats. It also promotes the use of industry consensus-based compliance methods for specific designs and technologies, a concept that was first introduced to general aviation through the Lightsport Aircraft Regulations. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta said in part during a press briefing, quote, the rule is a model of what we can accomplish for American competitiveness when government and industry work together and demonstrates that we can simultaneously enhance safety and reduce burdens on industry. This change represents the most innovative revision of general aviation aircraft certification rules since the late 1930s. The rule will not become effective until August of next year, but it's truly a reason to celebrate the advancement of general aviation. It's a good thing we could start our report today with good news, because back here at ANN and headquarters, the staff is scratching our collective heads over pictures that were published late Wednesday showing dozens of warehouse Cessna light sport Skycatcher airplanes meeting their demise. In the story that a and broke shortly thereafter, there were reportedly between 60 and 70 airframes being stored after Cessna Textron made the move to withdraw the aircraft from production and sales that were shown being ripped up and crushed with the appearance that the engines were still attached. Cessna entered the special light air sport production of these airplanes with the intent of going back to the days when people learned how to fly in small, affordable Cessnas and became loyal Cessna customers in the future. Management changes at Cessna killed this concept and along with it, the demise of what could have been a highly popular light sport aircraft. It's a pretty ugly end for an airframe that was once considered to be a potential bellwether for the future of the light sport aviation movement. After the break, ATK launches Pegasus rocket from Stargazer Mothership. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA, one of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. After two aborted attempts, NASA and Orbital ATK launched a constellation of eight microsatellites using the Pegasus rocket released from Orbital Stargazer L-1011 aircraft last week. The rocket carried eight satellites that will be part of the Cyclone Global Navigation Satellite System. The spacecraft will monitor tropical cyclones using GPS data to more accurately track storm speed, course, and strength. Spaceflight Insider reports that five seconds after release, 
The Pegasus rocket fired its first stage for 65 seconds. The second stage burn lasted 161 seconds, at which point the payload fairing was jettisoned. The third stage then ignited and locked the satellites into their assigned orbit. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of As we celebrate the memory of our dear friend Bob Hoover, it's exciting to see Bob in action only three years ago as he performs his last four-point roll in a North American Sabreliner. Search Hoover's Final Four-Point Roll on YouTube. After these messages, Mesa pilots beef up labor dispute war chest. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Mesa Air Group pilots represented by Alpha announced that the group has received a grant of $2 million from Alpha's contingency fund. The money is directed for events and projects that will support the Mesa pilots in securing a contract. The FAA has awarded type validation to Bombardier commercial aircraft for its CS300 airliner. This means that both the CS300 aircraft and the smaller CS100 aircraft are now approved by Transport Canada, the European Aviation Safety Agency, and the FAA. The new public charter service, Jet Suite X, began selling seats this week for flights to and from Santa Monica, California, starting February 6, 2017. Santa Monica residents will receive 25% off all fares after meeting certain qualifications. This new business at the airport must be maddening to the anti-airport Santa Monica City Council. The global military UAV market is projected to grow to $13.9 billion by 2026. In recent years, there has been a growing use of drones by militaries worldwide. More than 10,000 military drones are now operated or coming into service around the world. The public will be able to eavesdrop on December 24th as the Civil Air Patrol helps the North American Aerospace Defense Command track Santa Claus. At least seven CAP National Net Control stations will be providing periodic updates on Santa's location. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has seriously botched FAR Part 107, which covers the non-recreational use of drones, according to drone lawyer Enrico Schaefer, who made the statements during a podcast posted to DroneLawPro.com. What he's referring to is a need to require permission to operate drones in airspace that is FAA regulated for the purpose of separating aircraft that are flying on instrument flight rule clearances. This airspace is classified as B, C, D, and E airspace that is on the surface. While the regulation addresses the need for drone operators to receive permission to fly in those airspaces, it directs applicants to a specific website to receive such approval. The approval cannot be accomplished with a simple phone call. The approval process requires an application that could take from weeks to months to receive the necessary permission. Schaefer says that the FAA does not fundamentally understand how the drone business works. He added, quote, 
You may as well tell people not to file at all. You can't plan flights 90 days in advance. That makes no sense. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.